The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien. Joined this morning by our man Basil Chapman, filling in for Tom for the hour. Basil, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm fantastic, man. How's your morning going? Very good. Thank you. Good. Well, we have some action in the market, Basil. As usual, the market's still digesting the rate cut from yesterday. Right now, we have the Dow up about 62 points. That's about two-tenths percent. S&P positive by 10 points, or about three-tenths percent. NASDAQ leading the way up about 49 points right now, or six-tenths percent in the positive. We're going to jump right into it, Basil. We're going to go over our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, right after the show. Folks, fast market. Kevin, Alex Coffey, the team at Thinkorswim, TD Ameritrade Network, put on a great program. And, man, they got a lot to talk about, I'm sure. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Basil. Uh, good morning you know, to you. Tommy, th yesterday was an interesting day for me because because of a family obligation. I had the I was out of the office which gave me the opportunity to listen to Jerome Powell's statement from start to finish, every single word. And I thought it was, I, I, found, I saw some really interesting things that Jerome Powell did. And here's the one that really caught my eye. He read a prepared answer to a question, right? Someone asked him a question that he probably anticipated was coming. And rather than talk off the cuff like he normally does, he read a prepared answer to it, which means the evolution of Jerome Powell continues. You know, he is so now concerned about his words and what they do to this market that I thought he came through that press conference yesterday as clean as he ever has without making any major headlines or gaffes or anything like that because of, I think he's over-preparing. For these, for, for these questions now. And I thought that was just a little something that I caught him reading an answer yeah, that to, I, I've never seen him do before. To frankly. be hyper aware almost, right, of, of how critical those words are yes. and, and delicate, I think, is, um, you know, what I think of the market. And you're right, Kevin. I mean, I have just even the S&P. Man, you look at it, 245, we're basically at the low of 2980, and we're almost 40 points in the S&P right. above that level, and we just charged higher for the rest of the afternoon. So I you think know, the, the market... I think he gets graded on how the market did, you know, when he cut and how he reacted and how he discussed how he discussed it and the market rallied so i think he he had a winning day yesterday um i thought it was fascinating the other thing that i noticed he really touched on this statement organic natural growth of the balance sheet and i thought that was the other interesting thing about his comments yesterday because of this if you're trying to steepen the yield curve more QE or the potential for more QE is kind of working against what you're trying to accomplish. And I thought that was the other fascinating yeah. thing. But make no mistake, it was dovish and considered dovish. But that, that pressure on the overall bond market will actually flatten the yield curve, not steepen it. Yeah, I mean, they just had to come in today, right, again with 75 Mm -hmm. Billion dollars um, for overnight In the repo. repo markets, yes. Um, really interesting that whole story as things go along with the Fed, and of course uh, it shifts to the October meeting already. Um, we have a few things happening this morning, Kevin. I'm sure you yes. saw Microsoft uh, last night with 40 billion dollar buyback and raising their dividend as well, which almost like got lost in the story I heard. But raising it five cents to 51 cents, they're right. up like 2.2 percent today, charging on a powerhouse company. Um, what do you think of Microsoft over there? You know, I think this is one of those days where that news is going to raise Microsoft. As you can see, it's up $3.40, but it's going to raise the whole chip sector. All yeah. the semis will be strong on that. And and Micron's up, up on that news. I mean, I think you're going to see – that's what I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see some lift from all these companies. Um, you know, I, 
that's the way we trade now, right? We trade via sector, but I mean, that's big news out of Microsoft stock trading 100, almost $142 now. Yeah, and that NASDAQ leading it, I think NASDAQ's up about six tenths, maybe seven tenths percent in the positive. Right. So what's exactly. going on? This I mean, the Nasdaq's up 43 points. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, I mean, that's kind of leading the market higher here. It looks like uh, the E-minis are up. They were just up 10. Now they're up nine and a quarter. I mean, this is a good, solid, strong day. And like we talked about earlier in the week here on, on, on the network, not a lot to get in the way of this market right now. It's a pretty thin week for economic data. You know, after the Fed announcement, there's really no, other than Fed speakers, there's no data tomorrow at all. And the data that came out today, jobless claims, good number. Yes. Philly Fed, good number. Existing home sales just came out at 9 o'clock and beat. That's a good number. So, you know, it looks like some of the data, if we can get past this meeting. Start looking back at earnings and data and, and, and determine whether this market is, this economy is as healthy as we think it is, because the data says it is, that's for sure. And the market says it is since that press conference. I mean, Absolutely I just pulled right. up the NASDAQ like we we're talking about, Kevin. NASDAQ 100, we were at 78.20, and we're now sitting at 79.60, 140 NASDAQ 100 points from, you know, 2.30 yesterday. And if you asked, is the market up almost 2%, I'd say, ah, maybe. I mean, that's a huge market to be up 2%, and it almost feels sneaky, where you don't even realize it's that much off of that low. You know, the roller coaster, Tommy and Basil, that this market has been the last 30 to 60 days, and here we find ourselves 3017 on the E-minis. Pretty amazing, resilient market for everything that's going on, not only in our economy, but in the world, frankly. And this is what something we I spoke in New York Saturday to a bunch of TD Ameritrade uh, customers, and what I talked to them about is everyone's prepared for the looming economic slowdown that's coming via China and Europe. Everyone seems to be prepared about that. It has been, you know, covered to the media has been all over it, right? And what? But are you prepared for what if it doesn't happen? What if China and Europe start to recover instead of getting worse and dragging us down? What if our economy and maybe a USMCA and a China deal and things like that drag the rest of the world up? Are these are the TD Ameritrade investors that I was talking to ready for that? Because sometimes these markets will go where you least expect them to, and they'll go where the most people can get hurt. Kevin? You know? uh, I yeah. Just have a quick question. I don't know if you're legally you're allowed to speak about it, but the IAI, which is the iShares broker dealer uh, in ETF, is doing very well. Um, it seems to me that uh, a lot of people must be um, coming into the brokerage houses and buying a lot, a lot more than before. Um, I don't know if that's something you're seeing, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, two, two things, Basil. Number one, you're right. I can't talk about the brokerage industry. And number two, I can't talk about ETFs because TD Ameritrade as a broker-dealer doesn't own any of those ETFs. So unfortunately, I can't comment on either one of those situations. <laughs> I'm I'm restricted by my licensing to talk about either one so, of those. Okay. So, I thought, uh, so sorry, what but... are you going to be talking about on the show today then, Kevin? Today, we're, here's what we're going to do. We got two. We kind of got a, 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 a two-part two show. Uh, like Folio is going to come on in, the, in our last block of the day and talk about Nike and Under Armour and compare those two. Use social data to compare those two. But in the first thing, because of all the news coming out about media companies and, and media stocks like that, we're going to talk about Roku, Disney, Netflix, and we're going to compare those three Roku, companies. Roku, Disney, Netflix. Kevin, man, we appreciate it. Have a great show. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you on Tuesday. Thanks for having me. You're Thanks for using the Taz right Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner.
scanner to profit this webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up all new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk start your subscription by visiting the front page of tfnn.com today and you'll find the task profile scanner under the services tab sign up today are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, everybody. Tommy O'Brien joined by Basil Chapman this morning. We got markets in positive territory right now. Dow up about three tenths percent or 91 points in the green. S&P up four tenths, 12 points in the green. NASDAQ leading the way up a solid six tenths or 50 points right now, trading at 82.28. Um, so maybe we can start off with Microsoft, Basil. I was interested when I heard the news yesterday. I'm a big fan of Microsoft in terms of what they have been able to get done seems like they're going to be around forever 142 up a solid three dollars and 40 cents today and i was wondering what your take is on that company basil it's something if uh you know i had to build a retirement account it's something i'd feel super confident just fundamentally um about a company like that well there are a couple of things going on there were stocks in the year 2000 with the uh, internet bubble that saw triples and quadruples. They were just spectacular stocks to the yes. upside. And then after the crash, and that really was a crash for that particular sector, some of them got cut in, I mean, 88%, 93% down. Um, and Microsoft was one of those stocks. Well, if I show you the chart of the monthly uh, and this is just going back to 2012. Let me just Remarkable. squeeze this, and you'll see something quite incredible. This is one of the very best out of the ones that have the old became new again in the last two years. And Microsoft was one of them. You had Adobe, you had a number of those stocks that were around. 53.97 was the high back in 2000. It dropped a little bit dropped down to $14.87. I'm not sure whether this was split afterwards or not, but these are the prices sure. that I've got. Then it takes out that high in 2016, and now it's almost three times higher. It's at 141.88 all-time high. 
stocks. And um, there are not that many stocks that have been as spectacular as Microsoft. There are a lot of stocks that were the old. I mean, Akamai, there are a lot of them that you know, had spectacular moves, oops, I typed in the wrong place. Um, but Microsoft is absolutely a leader. And how they transform themselves is that speaks to the to the ability of the company yeah. not just to change their old modus operandi but to to really become and not just go with the flow but the price itself looks as if they are leaders so i agree with you if you're looking at this as a as a long term play They've done something quite spectacular, and they really deserve, obviously, to be at highs, all-time highs right now, and um, a tremendous support. The way is held. You can see in the week, the monthly chart is on the right. The middle of the chart here is the weekly. On the left is the daily. You can see that it's it's really walked the 14-period moving average, the black line, as support just constantly for the last year and a half. And now it's turned the 137 nine period green green line there as key support. So 137 to 136 would be major support for Microsoft. And the fact that it broke to a new high yet takes it above the previous high. And uh, I've got it now in legs C in the weekly chart. And usually we're looking for at least a D. So this is and this is a leg D in the monthly chart. So yeah. this is very good. And just from a fundamental, and that's a great take. I appreciate it. Uh, I look at the same thing in terms of they just they were going to go bankrupt because they didn't have a great product, you know, they and they had no hardware at all. And those Windows uh, laptops, I don't have one, but I looked at them when I was buying one and, and they're pretty awesome and they're not they're not cheap on the same effort that they get a premium price almost up to Apple's price, it seems. And, and I was wondering, I've looked at it as well, being very impressed. I, I wondered how they were selling so many, but I, people I've spoken to say they are fabulous. Yeah, I just didn't need all the bells and whistles of like a, of more of a business laptop, but I could see anybody in any type of creative or even everyday life type laptop um, and a powerful one too. And of course, then they have the recurring revenue that we do use in terms of Outlook, Outlook 365, and that I believe it's like $99 a year. And so simple, whether you're family or work, and I don't see that going away anytime soon. Well, that revenue stream, I think, was so clever. I, I, when they did it initially, I thought, why, who's in here? You can get this for free, and why, why would you be paying, uh, you know, for Microsoft upgrade? Well, it turns out that it was a fantastic business decision, and after that, many companies started to treat that as a model to have and the cloud ability to store your emails be accessible everywhere for a small company like tfnn it's great not having to you know worry about some st server storage occasionally or interactivity from accessing things via your phone via your desktop it's all set up in one place there's a lot of convenience and you never have to upgrade so it's one small fee and i believe the family fee it's like 99 dollars and it comes with three or five licenses um really yeah hmm. So there's their yeah, free, uh, but I'm a fan. Microsoft still all-time highs, pretty remarkable. The, I, I was going to ask you a question here about, um, in terms of the overall market, uh, you, you always give a, a really succinct, a crisp uh, update in your, in your um, hourly uh, updates, market updates. Um, is there something that's really on your focus right now that, I mean, the Fed's already had this, say, what, what, just looking at the market, what, what is a concern? You know, not to bring it all back to really politics, because the underlying numbers really matter more than anything. But I do see that we're now coming into almost October of 2019, and that can be good and bad. You know, the president, like any president, is going to want a good deal, potentially. It's going to want to win. And maybe that spurs on some kind of a deal. Maybe that spurs on the, the, the need to make come back to China or Mexico or, um, or something to that effort that could get some confidence going in the market. And on the flip side, the rhetoric could get very bad. And maybe, um, you know, it just could cause more uncertainty in the market, its potential. But I think it's just going to be a factor that might not be priced into the market of the uncertainty that's going to come. I mean, if this is a close election, which it may be one way or the other, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty coming up to that date. And it, I see there's a, some headwinds over the next year um, from that front. The other thing is, that in terms, just in terms of politics, it seems to me that the Democrats, because it's just a year to go, maybe a month more than a year, but 
they've got to whittle it down to get down to at least two or three leaders, and you've got to really get it down to two because there's really not much time. I agree, so, and that's why I think, Basley, you're kind of right on the same point in that it feels like it's further away because there's still so many Democrats that it doesn't feel like an election is so close. But at some point, I believe primaries maybe start in February. Um, we should get that, but it's it's not that long, and then you will have it whittled down, and then the rhetoric will either improve or get better, and and I just am anticipating that being a little bit of uncertainty in the market one way or the other. So the market likes to climb a wall of worry. We've seen even now this week, it was a lot of worrying, and the market's held very well. But I, I'm, I'm fascinated because just two things, if I can. FXI, which is the China, this is the iShares China large cap ETF, after everything that you've heard, you would think that the ETF representing at least the very largest companies would be seeing um, lower prices and certainly taking out key support levels. Well, last month we did just fractionally take out the low that was made back in October of 2018. But in the December low that we went to, since then, China's actually held quite well. It hasn't rallied like we have. But it's holding quite well. So yeah. that speaks to what you were saying just earlier on. We'll but finish this up right after the break. Well. That's perfect. I want to. We'll be right back, folks. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Tommy O'Brien with Basil Chapman this morning. Right now, we got markets in, po in positive territory. S&P up about 11, NASDAQ up 49, Dow up 86. And Basil, we just got the EIA inventory for natural gas. I just want to pull up the chart for a moment. And I actually don't even have the numbers yet, but just to give a quick update, natural gas looks like we just traded from about 259 to 256. So maybe a little bit of a bigger build in the natural gas than it was expecting. But we'll check back when we get those numbers uh, as well. So I, just, yeah, I've got natural gas. Uh, it's got 2.5, which is a continuous contract. Uh, the 14 period moving average support in the day, but it just made a peak E and it looks to me like it's in a little digestive phase right now. Had a really good move, probably going to take a bit of a breather, but uh, it's certainly come way off the lows that was made. That I we know, made, quite uh, a run, right? I mean, everything yeah. really had a big August in terms of interest rates, but man, natural gas as well. And uh, I mean, you put it, was that, a, yeah, that monthly going back to when it was at five dollars four dollars oh, pretty spiral. remarkable yeah but look how quickly it gave it back so just to and finish up more. basil what you were saying on yes. china because i think it kind of yes. jived with what kevin hinks was saying that what if um are you prepared for you know if there is a trade deal if if things pick back up because you know i i say there's an election just to get the point across and i'm trying to make and make sure appropriately that it's not like bad things are going to happen that's going to spur the effort to hopefully have good things happen as well for to need well, it, gives in, need it. it gives incentive yeah yes well, well the two things one is it gives incentive for the U.S. to make some kind of maybe a little bit of a compromise enough to Definitely. say that we've got to win. Because you remember, I like to think of Trump as the 50, 51 percenter. He likes just to be able to say, I won, even if it's just a one percent win. Sure. Uh, so maybe that's part of it. But the other, on the other hand, China at this particular point has to they have to be playing the political game behind the scenes. They have to be saying, if we can wait this out, maybe there'll be a change of, you know, a change of, of government uh, things. They don't really know what they can do because it's a long time to keep this going for a year. Although we all, all know that China, when it's spoken about China, people talk about a lot of patience. They have a lot of time. They don't have deadlines. But actually, I think there are deadlines because there's a much greater middle class now and people are expecting more. So I think that they don't have what they used to have as a regime. They, they don't have that kind of leeway to say, hey, what we say goes. I think there's more discontent in the, in the populace that they can sense. So on both sides, we've got the opportunity here to have some kind of compromise. We'll see, but I, I agree, because the, the way the, act, the chart is acting in the monthly, certainly any breakdown from here would be very negative. But holding even in this range means that you're not going to lower lows. You, you're starting to form some kind of a base. And that says, be careful, because there could be some good news coming, yes. Basil, I wanted to jump around if I could, um, because Kevin said they were going to talk about some of the equities, and, and I'd like to take a look at as yours as well. How about Disney? Um, another company, I mean, they're, they're down dramatically today, and I'm not sure what that spike uh, is initially in terms of being negative, and it looks like they just fell from 137 to about 136 on the open. So there's a very interesting thing that's going on with Disney. And one of the things I've said to subscribers, I've shown the chart very often. And I said, you know, I just, I don't understand the company because it's not the old Disney that we knew. It wasn't that entertainment with theme parks and, and the Disney movies. Now it's a very complex um, company. Definitely. And as a result, you could see that the high that was made, and I've got this in the chapter wave notation, when you get to a D, you start to look for the chance that you could turn down. It doesn't mean to say you have to, but that's where very often you can see right here on the left side chart at 147.15, the all-time high on the 29th of July, Disney made a top at that peak D and, and things, and what I had shown subscribers is that there's a little mini, what I call the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, hit it three times, well, hit it twice from that previous peak D back in, in uh, June, and it went a little higher, 147, but it took quite a hit down to the 131 level. And now you can see it's kind of stuck. This, this stuck says to me, especially with what I've got an unusual peak G, in the weekly chart and a, a potential F in the monthly, it says to me there's a really good chance that Disney has had a spectacular move and that now there's a digestive phase and that we probably, I'm thinking very uh, seriously that 
there's what I call a hat trick top. You can only get a hat trick top when the monthly chart looks like it's about to make a top. You get the, the, the weekly chart must be ready, but you have to start off with the shorter term, which is the daily. Well, the daily on the 29th made a reversal at a peak D. That peak G, as unusual as it, you can see the middle chart shows the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, very negative, and the stochastic is way down at 39%. And you can see there's a pattern I call the H pattern. You come down sharply, you make a little arch, and you start to roll over. That's what I think we're looking at in Disney's weekly chart. The monthly chart is still early because the MACD is still strong, the stochastic still at 85%, over 80%, I like very much. But that's how you go to a hat trick top. That's what I was speaking about a year, exactly a year ago when I was saying I think that the FANG stocks are about to make hat trick tops, which means that based on the daily, weekly, monthly, the monthlies are finally going to sell off, which means you're going to have time and price months before they come back again to all time highs. I've got a feeling Disney's in that category, and I, I don't know anything on the fundamentals. I'm just looking at the chart, and it seems to me that if Disney takes out 130 support in the next six weeks, it's going to go not necessarily a lot lower, but the upside is going to be very limited. Since so we're talking my... about FANG stocks, could we jump to Netflix, too? Because that was going to be my next question. Um, it's it's and you try and digest just what's happening in the market like you're talking about in terms of a wildly different company. Disney's going to be streaming all their own content. They're still going to have the movie release business making billions in theaters because they can't just deploy those movies right to their streaming service as Netflix does. And then, of course, you have the parks and so forth. But, man, they're basically going to be Netflix plus a lot more going on, right? They're going to have their own streaming platform completely and then they're going to have the brands that netflix doesn't have and then they're going to have the parks that you know it doesn't have and and the rights to mickey mouse and so forth right. so you see that in the netflix chart i think already and uh and Disney's more a composite because you can you can get or you, although you won't get some of this, uh, the the movies that you get you could get on Netflix, Disney has the opportunity because there's a younger crowd and 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 parents are looking at what they can safely show their kids. Definitely. So I think in that regard, they can't, you have to think of them a little bit as separate companies. Um, but I'm also thinking of this as in the 1920s, when you, you got the movies, and then the movies changed very soon after that from black and white to color. Um, this is exactly, and what happened was, if you read about the artists, Chaplin and uh, Grout, the, the Marx Brothers, at that particular time, when the movies came out, those those uh, non-talking actors kind of lost their job, okay. and the whole industry changed. And all of a sudden, you got this where you had huge orchestras um, for the movies. We're in that same exact situation right now, where the whole thing is broadened out. They forced to have actors and, sh and new shows this is going to be very interesting it is going to be interesting and i see that netflix chart we'll finish it up when we come back folks looking at netflix looking at disney and markets right now in the positive Bal's and i are going to be right back if you're in the cd market and looking for a secure investment the tiger first mortgage program may work for you the security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in st petersburg florida the Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P positive by 13 points, NASDAQ positive by 54, the Dow now positive by 98 points. Pretty stable, but inching up a bit and finishing it off with Netflix. So I see on the monthly, they got that peak E all-time high. Then you got an A in there, and we got a peak D on the weekly. So what do you what do you, uh, what do you consider when you look at Netflix, and especially after in light of, you know, how you look at Disney as well on top of that. So Netflix, I've never quite understood Netflix, why it ran up to 423. There's something I must be missing fundamentally. I, I saw it as a They're chart. They're going to take pattern. over the world, Basil. You didn't get the yeah. memo? <laughs> yeah. That's what it seemed like. Yeah. But if you look at it very closely, they were bumping into a lot of problems. And even this last rally that came uh, going into the, uh, the the most recent high of 385, which was interesting, it made a double top. A number of stocks made the same kind of double, uh, double top within a point uh, of the left side high and then came down. This one suggests that there's a lot going on in Netflix, technically, that that. I would not be surprised if it if it closes on any weekly basis underneath 280. Okay. There's a real good chance that it's going to test the low of um, January somewhere around the 256 level. I don't know if it has to go back to the low of December at 267. But that H pattern, it just looks. I mean, look at look at the way the MACD in the daily chart ran up so high. The stochastic ran up, and the price couldn't. It, it just couldn't get out of its own way. And even now, it's down four points today yeah. uh, at 286. It's so having the, a problem. And I appreciate you covering both the stocks. The reason why I ask, I've just been thinking about it myself. Like Netflix versus Disney, they're going to be direct competitors. You have Apple coming into the foray as well with their streaming service. Disney, just kind of like you said, if you have children especially, let alone all the brands they have of Star Wars, right? That's not just children. So they're going to have uh, an adult population as well. Those movies will go to theaters first. Then they'll be, I'm sure, to Disney+. Plus. Uh, Netflix, though, they don't have those iconic brands or anything. They're going to have a similar service without all that brand identity. And that's why I think, you know, if you're looking at the two of them, 
I, I really see a lot of strength in, in Disney when it just really has all those brands I, to go I on. absolutely agree. I, yeah. I agree for a number of reasons. Technically on the chart, that's why I, I agree, but I think fundamentally as well as I understand it. But even if you look at Apple, Apple has something else, and they have so much cash. This is... If they get into the whole uh, idea of, of, you know, movies and streaming in yes. a serious way, they've got the dollars to do it. I think this is a great time Which to I'd be say an, act, an I, actor and a musician. Yeah, and I, I just say that they're, they're in it. That was their first foray, and this is one that they can't just dabble into and try to be into. That I imagine that they're going to be fully in to being a content serious, provider. They will be very serious. Having all those platforms. It'll be additive to their products. And now since they've gone to the Microsoft model with, you know, so much leasing or, or, or yes. getting a residual every month for all their products, I this Apple chart is very good. It looks like um, it's going to hold very well here. I was saying to Tom, it might have even been during one of the breaks in our program, just saying, you know, just like an Amazon, that they don't even need to make money off of some of the things they do. As in, just to bring everybody into their ecosystem to sign up for Apple TV but would be well worth it to keep them buying iPhones, to keep them paying for everything in the iTunes store that they get a percentage of, whereas Netflix doesn't have that benefit on the flip side. Now, Apple has constant contact, for yes. sure. That's, and that's really what and they And I'm want. a fan of yep. both. I have an iPhone. Uh, and I pay for Netflix, right? I have Amazon Prime as well, which I don't use as much. You get so many other value items out of Amazon Prime as well. But then, Basil, I read an article yesterday, which was really made me start to think about it, is that Apple's coming into the room. They're the giant in terms of how big they are. I'm sure they've at least considered buying a company like Disney, and I think the only thing that would prevent it would be potentially regulators that wouldn't allow two giants that are going to compete in the same arena. But it's almost something where I, and that's just another notch to Disney, where I keep saying they're in the streaming business and Apple doesn't have that kind of brand for streaming. Netflix doesn't have that kind of brand. Um, and app, and Disney's going to offer it for, what is it, $7 a month? And it's international. I mean, all of them are international, but Apple in a different way is, is international in the sense that it is, it's, it's a product name. It isn't just uh, entertainment. This is, they encompass almost everything. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And of course, we're, I'm in Florida. You have Disneyland Extraordinaire down here, and it's just amazing how expensive everything is. Folks, if you want to hear, they do 5Ks, they do 10Ks all over the country, right? They're for fun. Well, if you go to the Disney one, I think it's, it's, it's a, it, extraordinary how much they get away with charging on everything they do. So they're going to keep printing that money. Very interesting. Natural yeah. gas. Jumping over, Basil, we got about 255 on that natural gas contract right now. Just continues the slide from about 264. That's talking nine pennies in the last less than three hours. Uh, been quite a run up, maybe just giving itself a breather. Crude oil, we saw a little spike. Maybe we could jump to crude and take a look, Basil. We talk so about interesting symmetrical formations. I thought of you this morning when I saw crude making almost a double top at 59.40, and then it kind of cascades down in a similar fashion all the way until the load around 10 a, 10 a.m. So this this speaks to a number of things. The spike that we saw starting Sunday night going into Monday morning and crude is just tootling along in, in the 54s on Friday and the next thing you know it's up at the 62 and a half was in 63.14 area. This is the continuous contract on the 16th. Next day it gives it all up uh, that is the, the open the candle itself yes. not from the low that was made on friday but it makes an even lower low yesterday today tried to rally and it's it's not holding it's up 52 no, cents which right. is interesting because i don't know how many times you and i've been on and at the same time as we've looked at crude oil maybe rallying natural gas has pulled back or natural gas is rallying and crude they seem to go in opposite directions so volatile too yeah yeah so it's up 52 cents but it seems to me that this is really speaking loud and clear which is one of the reasons why i think that the market got that idea that uh oh this is another one of those buying opportunities um and because we've seen that if crude oil it's still holding above the 55s. Is it 58, 53? My my only concern here is, if crude oil holds 58s, and very quietly starts to go to 60 and a half, 61 and a half, 62 and a half, and then all of a sudden takes out the high that was made on Monday, uh, okay. 63.14. And if it, I don't want to see it done in one day, but if it does it very quietly, that's going to say, uh-oh, 
keep your eye on crude oil internationally. Things are not that cool right now. That <laughs> not you can that just cool indeed. It. So, yes, this is... No, I just joke because I, I agree, Basil, and completely in terms of just even the amount of premium that maybe the market should price in there for a similar event to happen. Seems like it wouldn't make common sense to have potentially 5% of the world's oil supply shut down and it'd be a fairly small, fairly... And not, and not that same day have the Dow down 375 points and the S&P down 40 and close at the lows and have absolute fear over the next entire week at least. Yeah. So coming back like this says, hey, we're so used to these momentary moments of climax or, or, or uh, tension that resolve themselves so quickly. Maybe this is just another case of one of those. They're going to get that oil 100% back online within no time. So that's what the market may be taking for granted right now. Stay tuned, folks. Bals and I are coming right back up. We'll be finishing the show. One more segment. Stay tuned. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Market staying in positive territory. Dow up about 83 points. NASDAQ up 58. S&P's up 13. So I see you jumping around to some of the indices, Basil, with uh, the Dow up there currently. What are you taking a look at? So a couple of things that I've been talking about. It's exactly a week now that I've been saying. Uh, in I have a, a program that I, I developed a long time ago. <clears throat> 
that gives automated uh, Chapman wave, uh, I call it Chapman wave resistance and support levels. And I was saying that in, in the Dow chart, there was a ton of uh, resistance in the 26,800s to 26,900s. It went right through that. Next one is at 27,461. But the same thing occurred in the S&P. The S&P had automated uh, all the way to 3,021. And here we are at 3,020. And what that does very often is it puts a hold, it puts a cap. And until the market or whatever we're looking at really bumps up against it sharply and tests it, it doesn't break through. But if it breaks through, that becomes very positive. So I'm going to see how the market holds um, right here, if it's able to break out. But it, what I'll be talking about on my show at noon, my Tiger Technicians Hour, is the patterns that we're looking at. What is working and what is not? Why did the IWM have such a fantastic move, lead, lead the way up, and then all of a sudden took the biggest hit on the way down? Is this something that's happening in the Russell 2000? Are we rotating? Are we about to go through? Are we, in, in fact, right now in the middle of a rotational process? And that's what I'm going to be talking about. What, what ETF sectors are working? What's not working? So it's going to be uh, one of those where it's kind of nitty gritty. I want to look at and say, Let's look at it purely technically, see what's happening. Basil, I appreciate you joining the show. Folks, check it out, the opening call under newsletters. And I was just looking, Basil, you have like five webinars in there. They get one just recently, August 21st. Thanks again, Basil. Have a great day. We look forward to the show at noon. Thank you, Tommy. Always enjoy. Stay tuned, folks. Live programming all day. Tom will be back live at 3. Have a great one.